Okay, everybody, we're doing something pretty easy. I'm going to try to run through superpowers over the next few tutorials or so. And this one is going to be how to make a player move faster when they're holding a thing. So right now we picked up an apple, I'm going to hold it, and this will give us the ability to run a heck of a lot faster. And if we take it out of our hands, then we go slower. A simple power up to do, all done with verse. So I thought I'd show you guys that. Let's get into it. All right, we are inside of UEFN. As you can see, there's very few items involved in this game so far. We have an item spawner, which is set to having an apple. We have a conditional button, which is also set to needing an apple. We have our game manager device living in here. And then we have our player spawners here so that we can figure out who's in the game. Okay, so that is the extent of what is required for this particular power up. Let's take a look at the verse code. All right, we are in verse. Remember, if you are a Patreon member, this stuff is all available to you. You do not have to look at the screen. Go get it. For everybody else, let's learn exactly what this does and cover why I do the things I do and how I do them. So what we want to be able to do is have a player hold an object. And when they're holding that object, something's going to happen to them. We've already covered this in the invisibility tutorial that we did a while back, but this one is where we're going to make our player move faster. So how do we do that? So first thing we need to do, we need to keep track of all of our players. Every single map that you ever make, should have a custom player object slash class in it. This one is very simple. There's almost nothing to it. I'm taking this down to the bare bones. So that's a map. Now a map is just, well, it's a really handy object that holds objects that is indexed by objects. So it's, it's really cool. When I say indexed, it means that the way to get to the object in there has to be unique. And that's the index, just like in a book or something, if you guys still read those. All right, so we've got our editables here, our two player spawners. We've got our editable for our conditional button because we need a conditional button to tell whether or not we are holding something. Conditional buttons are perfect for that. We also have two movement modular devices in here. One of them is for normal movement and one of them is for fast so that we can separate the two. So on begin runs when the game starts. So we want the player spawners to let us know when somebody's spawned. And then we're also going to spawn or start up a new thread kind of idea or check for item. And what this does is this goes through and says, hey, conditional button, uh, go through all the players. And uh, if one of them's holding an apple and they're not already running, then activate. So the movement modulator has an activate function on it. So if we take a look at the movement modulators here, I put them under the ground so they're not going to be visible because I found that even though I made them invisible in the game, they could still be sort of triggered, which is really weird. So I just put them underground. And if we take a look over on the right, we just select one of them for fast. I've changed the speed to two, so it's double their speed and then just turned off everything for them. I've also set the duration to infinite so that I don't have to have a time limit. It's just for however long they're holding the apple. Now you could put a time limit in here so that it turns off after say 10 seconds or something so they can't run forever. For this example, infinite. Same for the normal. It's just set to speed of 1.0 and an infinite duration. Very, very simple. Okay, back to verse. This spawn check for item runs a thread that does a loop. And then every second we're doing this. You could do this more often. You could do it every 0.1 of a second. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty much going to run as soon as they hold the apple. And we're doing a is holding item on the conditional button passing in the player's agent, which is set inside of custom player here. I'll show you this in a second. And then based on if they're holding it or not holding it, we're going to make them fast or slow. We also want to check to see if they're already activated on this movement modulator. Otherwise, they'll be constantly activated and it's weird. But this is just another way to keep state of what the player is, which you have to do with a custom player. So I encourage you, whatever you do, every game you ever make will always have a custom player. And this code is just par for the course. We're going to do an on player spawned and on player removed. The on player removed removes that player from the map. The on player spawned adds them to that map, which is again, an object that holds objects that is indexed by objects. So there you go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure it's a player, which it always is. Then we uh, see if they exist inside of the player's map. If they don't go ahead and make a new custom player object based on the custom player class, passing in the agent of this player 
and then we set that player in the player's map. So the custom player then instantiates with a brand new instance of the custom player, passes in the agent object because we don't have it defined here, so we require it, and then is fast to set to false by default because nobody's holding an apple as soon as they come out of the spawner. And that's it. That's everything that is involved in making this happen. Nothing too exciting, a very simple power up that I think anybody can do. And now you can do it with Verse, not just in Creative 1.0. So hopefully that's been pretty interesting and I will see you guys in the next one.